if Xbox wins, I'm going to quit. I want, again, I want to fucking point out how fucking retarded Twitter is, where I did not say those fucking words. A few moments ago. One thing I will say is, I refuse to believe and I refuse to accept that the winner in the video game industry is the one who can spend the most amount of money. Even if that is how it goes, I will quit gaming and I will be done. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Ooh, oh my God. Stop fucking lying. What can I say, folks? What can I say? I didn't say it, but I totally said it is basically the motto here. I mean, the guy can't take any more L's than he's taking right now. And now he's lashing out at the internet folk for basically something he already said. This, ladies and gentlemen, is MBG. But welcome to the video. Today we have a bunch of stuff to get through. I do hope you enjoy it. Let's see if we can hit that 500 likes. I am hoping to hit 7,500 subs by Christmas. We're a long way away from that, but who knows? The month is still young. With that said, if you do enjoy the content you're about to see, or if you've already enjoyed the content that you've already seen, do consider leaving a like, subscribe. You can support me further through my Patreon, YouTube membership, super thanks, or other means, but simply dropping a like and a subscribe is a fantastic way of supporting the channel. A few videos ago, I said I was going to talk about something that's awesome that's coming my way. I've got a potential sponsorship that's about to hit. It's a really good one. It's one I truly believe in because I have had a few offers and I don't generally like to pick ones that don't offer value or isn't something that I would go into or I would buy or I would use. This one, I believe, is something that I genuinely would use. In fact, I'm actually buying one to show support because I actually believe in the product. And hopefully, uh, if the sponsorship goes through and everything goes through, I'm hoping you guys can support me because we will be doing a dedicated video for this as well in order to just showcase the product. Can't go into much more detail than that, but I'm really hoping that we can get support behind that video because if that happens, then more sponsorship offers will come my way and then that will provide me with more offers to provide you lot with discounts and stuff. So all in all, I hope you do uh, check out that video when it does arrive, if it ever does arrive and we can make something of it. Right, first things first. Now that we've gone past the comical MBG, Starfield. We are honored to have won Xbox Game of the Year in this year's Golden Joystick Awards. Thank you for all the support Golden at Golden Joysticks. And as you can see here, Starfield has got Xbox Game of the Year. Now the ultimate game of the year did go to Baldur's Gate 3. There was no real surprise there, but Starfield has won the game of the year so that is really damn cool and it's good to see that you know the game has got some credits given to it now of course when we look at this xbox has two game of the years games this year at the golden joystick awards because starfield as we know got the xbox game of the year and risen evil 4 was playstation's game of the year a third party game i mean not even a single playstation game won a playstation game of the year probably because nothing was released during that time but still as as it's a third party game and it plays better on the xbox series x doesn't that make it the xbox got two game of the year you know victories that's a uh, pretty impressive right so uh <laughs> thought i'd uh throw that in so yeah it's a uh, interesting how a third party game wins that's not even an exclusive third party game gets a game of the year that's a a massive yikes if i must say so myself so this one over here is interesting because playground games fancy working on fable we have a number of awesome roles available in our design teams check these out Senior game designer level designer senior quest designer this to me tells me that fable is around two years out uh, or at least, you know, early 2025. I, ca I can't see it. I mean, maybe we can squeeze it into the end of 2024. But realistically, we're looking first quarter of 2025. If they're still recruiting people for these roles, it could be that they're just looking for support, which would then push it into late 2025. But 
I mean, late 2024, sorry. But yeah, it's a bit disappointing because I was looking forward to this next year. But it looks like it may be either the tail end of next year, which would still be next year, I guess. But uh, it will push out to uh, 2025, all in all. So here we see the Xbox Game Pass effect again. Xbox Game Pass leads to huge player engagement spike for Gotham Knights. Now, as we know, Gotham Knights had a pretty bad reception when it launched and people were really only getting 60 FPS from it from uh, the 4090 graphics cards and maybe the 4080, but it was hit and miss everywhere else and consoles were locked to 30 FPS, even the next gen ones. And this was a game that was supposed to have multiplayer, four player multiplayer, then went down to not having multiplayer then being cross-gen and then not being cross-gen and then having two-player co-op that i don't even know if it had i think it had two-player co-op but it was then stuck on the next gen only but it's on ps plus now and of course on game pass but it seems the game pass surge that gave it uh you know as soon as it hit game pass the amount of people wanting to try it and play it just surged the engagement and this is the game pass effect that you're looking for now as you know game pass has multiple different ways of uh, paying the publishers, whether it's per player playing the game or whether it's a lump sum. So depending, you know, depending on how many they did this, you know, the publishers of Gotham Knight are walking away very happy. The players are walking away very happy, and overall, everyone's happy. But it's good to see Game Pass having that positive effect again. Now, here we have our good friends, IGN. We aren't ready to give Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer a score yet, but after more time with it, we're not impressed by what basically feels like a little more than Modern Warfare 2 with new maps. Now, here's the kicker, right? They're saying there's new maps. Others are saying there's not new maps. I've read one publication saying that there's not new maps. I've read another. Hey, these lot are saying there is new maps. I've read people saying that the multiplayer is absolutely phenomenally brilliant. It's improved in gameplay, gunplay, uh, movement play. Just everything overall has been overhauled and made better. But here you've got IGN with that Xbox tax kicking in again, trying to downplay Call of Duty when the reality is it doesn't matter because it is still the bestseller on playstation on pc and will be on xbox as well no matter what ign wants to do no matter how much sony is willing to pay them it doesn't matter because at the end of the day this is a game regardless of how the reviews come out is going to sell well it's call of duty it will always sell well they could release the worst deal you know campaign ever and the reality is modern warfare freeze campaign from all the people that I've spoken to have said that Ghost and Vanguard are considerably worse. And yet IGN gives them a 6 and this one a 4? And then decides to give Quantum Error a 5? That's how you know that IGN has, you know, at least they're not hiding behind some facade anymore. They're openly admitting that they are a biased publication. They hate Xbox. They've got no desire to... Be show any favorability to Xbox because they're overlords who own them, you know, Sony Interactive Entertainment, who pay for their bills, their wages, their salaries, their bonuses, their paychecks, probably even pays the rent that IGN is having, you know, in the building that they're staying in, that they have to adhere to. They have to keep that loyalty towards Sony because IGN at this point is just a paid shield. And I mean, this here already uh, has like two articles on the same day talking about the same thing. Now, we all know about the uh, spawn point issue with Call of Duty and, you know, Activision did the right thing. They've pulled the maps to try and fix those situations. Yet this is seen as a bad move by these publications, well, by IGN, that them having to pull those maps is a catastrophic failure. But, you know, all the bugs that was in Spider-Man, and people saying that there wasn't, Insomniac just released like four pages worth of bug fixes. And I'm pretty sure that all of these publications were told that they're not allowed to talk about bugs when it comes to Spider-Man. I'm almost 100% sure about this. Now, 
Now, why didn't IGN talk about a single bug when it comes to Spider-Man? Now, if they had spoken about bugs when it came to Spider-Man, because there was a few, some catastrophic, in fact, like I experienced some really bad ones, not the forced ones that you saw online. I'm talking about genuine bugs that I actually experienced live on stream, right? While I was streaming, they were happening. These were bad, right? But you, and I know some people won't experience them, but these issues aren't just one off. They happened a few times, and I'm sure other publications happened too. It happened to them, but not a single one wanted to, you know, badmouth Spider Man or downplay Spider Man because of fear of what might happen when it comes to Sony. And so you can clearly see when it came to Starfield, they were all over the bugs. When it comes to Modern Warfare, they're all over the bugs. When it comes to Spider Man, they couldn't say a damn thing. Now, the question I have to ask you is, why? Why? And the answer is money. That's all it comes down to. You can bet your bottom dollar that IGN is getting paid. It's that simple, folks. That simple. And I wanted to add this one in here because I think following the IGN news, this one actually sums it up because I actually agree with Gaz on this one. There is no caption. I'm not even going to full screen this shit because it's just weird, right? It's just weird. Sony fans are just weird. My dude posing butt naked with a PlayStation. What's he going to do? Stick his dick in the drive? Or is he going to stick his dick in the power cord to try and give it anal? I don't know. I really don't know. But this is just weird. This <laughs> is just weird. <laughs> I mean, I've I've heard about people, uh, you know, licking their plastic and loving their plastic, but my dude posing naked with his plastic. I mean, that's just weird, man. That's just weird. That that that, that that's a bit too much for me. That's the end of this video. I hope you've had an awesome time. See you next time, and I'll see you in the next video, folks. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, we've got more news coming up. I'm trying to keep these videos shorter so we can, they're more consumable. So video two will follow not too long. Right, remain legend.